Good morning. We're getting ready for breakfast and then uh, trade show here in a little bit. So welcome to day two of Commodity Classic. Is it day two? It's really day one, but we did do the welcome reception last night. So we'll call it day two, Commodity Classic. We've gotten breakfast. We're kind of meandering over towards the trade show. We've got half an hour at least or so before it opens. But um, yeah, so are you excited? Oh yeah. <laughs> we have we have interviews today. We have to be ready for interviews. Get my fan girl on. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. This will be interesting. She's going to be my paparazzi. I Interview suppose. me being interviewed or film me being interviewed, being filmed. It's weird. <laughs> we are. Um, Assembling outside the trade show here, and we've got we've got mascots uh, the soybeans Soybeans there's there's cheerleaders hiding back there and all kinds of cameras set up here. I'm not that fancy We're, we're not we're not quite to that level of media just yet, but All right, we'll see what's going on here So I have a I have that E right there. That means exhibitor You're not an exhibitor no which means I can go in at nine? She can't. I'll wait. Everybody needs a shop towel. Hey, well. All right. Let's see if we can figure out what we're doing here. All right. Well, here is the Commodity Classic Trade Show. Let's um, be one of the weird people walking around with a camera. At least I look somewhat professional. We've got to hang out at the Golden Harvest booth here this morning for a while. We'll get a chance to walk around here probably more tomorrow than today. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try really hard to get people other than me in front of the camera today. So we'll see how this goes. What do you got? Nathan Baker at the Commodity Classic. Brandon Leander. Where are you guys what are you guys standing in front of today? I have no idea. What are we standing in front of? So I am introducing Nathan to GHX. So as a existing <laughs> Golden Harvest dealer, we are showing him the power of what is to come to the GHX mobile app. What is this app going to help Nathan do on his farm? So as a farmer, it will help him understand basically what is the right plant population for the right field. It will help Ooh, him important. with his scouting. So he will okay. be able to scout. He will also be able to work with the GHX service squad on also scouting. So it'll be a collaboration tool with his agronomist. My agronomist gets tired of me calling him asking what population I should plant different hybrids in. Well, and that is where on the max script, he can see basically field by field what is the max script should be, and it will be able to look and say, okay, 10D21 on this field. It will tell them what the recommended plant population should be. And when it comes to actual in-season planting, he will be able to go in and see, well, let me move my coffee around here. What are all the various products that he should be putting in various fields? Ah. So let's say, when, again, you have that farmer says, hey, where should I be putting that, or where did I plan to put that? Now you can see, hey, this field I was planning on putting 12S, this field 11B, 29, 22, E3. Awesome. So, Nathan, you had a little bit of tar spot this year. Not we bad. Did. We had tar spot. But a little bit. So, Brandon, let's say Nathan's out scouting fields, find some tar spot. What can he do with this app? So, when he is... He is out scouting his fields. He can go in field by field and he can say, you know what, this is where I want to go. I'm going to be looking at uh, this tablet field right here. I want to create a scouting pin. So I'm going to go in. Hey, this is where I saw it. I'm going to create my pin. I'm going to create that pin. Got pin. Of course, you can now work where we're at. Where we're at, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're scouting in Florida today. So, guys. I'll show you an existing scout. So, we're actually going to go and look at the tar spot. And when you do that, you can create your pin. That's going to give you information about the field, what was the crop, what was the product hybrid. And then you can put some notes in there. You can also take a picture of that tar spot, send it over. You can save that and share that with your agronomist. You can hashtag it, get some information. All of those pins will also then roll up to the agronomy team and see, hey, you know what, I'm starting to see tar spot trend in this geography. And they can all start putting together some videos that they can actually start seeing in, when we're looking at basically under the crop health, actually under yield, 
and we'll actually be able to start showing some information as far as some videos that the agronomy team can share out to the growers. Cool. Say, hey, here's what's kind of what we're starting to see, here's what we recommend you should be doing. All tied into the GHX mobile app. All right. Think that could be helpful? We can find some value in there somewhere. Yeah. Play with it a little bit. Think your daddy used that scouting pin you dropped? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here at Commodity Classic. Um, they can just walk through our GHX app and look. So Stephanie, hold on, hold on. Let me make this better. There you go. Now you can see us. Stephanie is. Um, what is your title now? Eastern Agronomy Manager. Eastern Agronomy Manager, which yeah. Eastern means Eastern United States. Correct. Or Eastern World. In I don't know. Minnesota. The whole country, basically. <laughs> She's She runs the show. She was the district or regional manager for us not long ago, but um, we were at FFA together, grew up five miles apart. Most like, importantly, I, neighbors. We, I, I, know, I know her. She's my strawberry person. This is this is the most important thing you will ever learn about stuff. It's probably true. <laughs> so if you're all need some strawberries, go buy them. You just need to get on YouTube here. I don't want to be on YouTube. You don't have a choice. Okay. Too late, you're already on YouTube. This is Chris Weaver. Chris, why are you important? Because I'm your friend. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. How endearing. It was. It was. Chris is, um, he's got a reputation around this show. I hope he's, most he's, of it's bad, but hey, we'll go from there. You've been fairly successful. Yes. We've had Four. really good success on soybeans. beans. We've hit 158, 140s, 130s. This year we were in a drought and we did 122 bushels. That's pretty good. Yeah. I would take 122 bushel in a drought any time. Golden Harvest much. beans, right? It was Golden Harvest 3762 E3. 37, that's a 3.7. Those yeah. are we're pushing it. It did a really good job for us this year with the drought stress. We'll play anywhere from a 2.7 to a 4.2. Four okay. Yeah, the... And the 27, 22 did a really good job for us this year. Okay. It was a really good bean. We got a, uh, did about 83 bushel on some sandier, loamier ground. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's impressive. So, uh, last summer, if you guys have been watching long enough, you may remember I went to a uh, high yield soybean clinic. Chris put it on, like, or and Golden be, Harvest put it on. He's the speaker. And I'll be back in Michigan, uh, speaking March 23rd for Golden Harvest. Cool. Um, up there. So, so I'm going to go listen to him again. Yeah. And, Love to have uh, you. it's, it's, he's, he's, He's a wealth of knowledge and somebody to learn from. So, hey, I thanks for having time. me. Yeah, and you. by the way, guys, tune into him. He's a great farmer. Thanks. So we're still hanging around the Golden Harvest booth. Look, look, it's me. And and there's Chris, and he put one in his wife's name too, because why wouldn't you? And um, well, I think I pop up on this list too. Uh, yep, right there. Be the tallest guy we've interviewed today. Yeah. There's somebody taller here. Yeah. Um, Tim, I'm button your bottom button. I'll, I'll... <laughs> yep, so our farm is, is literally situated right on the Washington border. There you go, interview number one with the Michigan Farm News. Actually knew uh, those guys from past FFA life, so that was good. So I hear there's an RFD interview coming up soon. I don't know, we're just kind of hanging out still. You having fun? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, good deal. All right, our FDTV interview is done. So um, I, I screwed up and I didn't say Borderview Farms or YouTube or anything like that in the interview, but it'll be okay. 
If you guys want to find it, I have no idea when it's going to air. If it's going to air, they probably won't use my footage at all. Although they seemed pretty happy, so. They said he did excellent. I've got a little time in front of the camera. It doesn't bother me, <laughs> you know, you know. So we're going to go into that trade show. We've got some time. There's a couple other things that I want to do this afternoon. Maybe don't have to do, but I want to do. So we're going to go do that. I'm going to see what we can find in the trade show. Hopefully we can get some people on camera and talk about some stuff with these companies. The nice thing about this show is there's not nearly as many people here. So people have time to talk to you. So we've been walking around some of the smaller booths and stuff over here in the corner, talking to some different people about some products that I'm actually gonna use. This show is awesome because you can just talk to people and they actually know what they're talking about and there's not a bunch of people that don't farm here, I guess, you know? So we're gonna make it over here. John Deere's got quite a booth. I don't, I'm not sure what this whole, I'm not sure what that's all about. They look important though. Like cash cab. Honey. They have free lunch here. Wow. How nice is that? We almost went out to the lobby to pay $20 a piece for lunch until somebody's like, no, I think there's a buffet over there. And there was. It was good. And it was not bad. That's impressive. I'll take Thanks it. to the uh, American Soybean Board something. I don't know. They paid for it, I guess. So that was cool. Anyway, I got a phone call while we were at lunch that I uh, my presence has been requested at the Golden Harvest booth by one um, Andy Clean. I am Andy Clean. We're going to go meet him. And probably stick a camera in his face. All right. Well, I haven't. Um, I, we haven't met Andy Clean yet. We were there, and then we had to go, and he wasn't there. I don't know. Anyway, he he's got my phone number now. They passed it along to him. So hopefully we'll catch up with him in a little bit. We've got to go find the Sound Ag booth, though. Uh, they are the makers of that Source product that I've been using, and um, they're having Shark Farmer Jeopardy with Mr. Rob Sharkey, and I want to go meet him. So we're gonna go there. All right, we're we're at Shark Farmer Jeopardy. That's happening over there. We'll check in on that in a second. But look, what we ran into it's Mr. Andy Clean. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? So we were we were looking for him earlier, but uh, yeah. yeah, good. Nice to meet you finally. Good yeah, to, yeah, for I, sure. You guys haven't seen it yet, but he sent me some stickers. Oh so, yeah. Oh, I have something though. Oh, all right. So you sent me stickers, right? Right. So I can go put those stickers on my tractors because they're pretty clean at the yeah, moment. Yeah, they are. The second I pull them into the field, they're not clean anymore. Do I have to rip the sticker no, off? No, you keep them on. You keep them on. Okay. I, I think you should I have. Do. I think you should have window cleans. Window cleans? Yeah, that way I can that take way? them off. That's a good idea. See, because it's not even clean anymore once I, I pull it into the field. I know. That's right. That's a good idea. See? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Great so idea. Look for those in the future. Yeah. But. No, I just I seen I was over at the Golden Harvest booth yep. and I seen Stephanie Smith there. Yep. I was like, hey. I see Nathan was down here because of Instagram. I was yep. like, hey, I got to meet him because I'm a big fan of his show. And it's a it's a great show. I love what you do. Thank you. And all you YouTube guys. Yeah, like the work you guys do is super awesome. Uh, it's, it is a fun thing to do. I enjoy it. Yeah, so. yeah. perfect. Well, yeah, cool. keep up the good work. And yeah, Thank you very much. So we, we got to get some soap. I'm, yeah, I'm working on getting go. some of that. Oh, I, yeah. it, it is available. All of your John Deere dealers now. So if you every, need some. Every John Deere dealer in North America can get it. So yeah, part yeah. number. Here's Go my shameless plug, PMH 4300, that's for the one gallon, and PMH 4302, five gallon. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andy. Good to meet you. Perfect. Pleasure to meet you. The man on the street segment of Shark Farmer Tea is a favorite. It's a way to connect with city folks. What famous city and street are most of these interviews taken? Nashville, Broadway. What is Nashville, Tennessee, Broadway? You got it. Nashville, Tennessee, Broadway. Mark, did, did you get Mark the answer? I did not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Rob Sharkey, Shark Farmer. And we got Duffy Egg up there. I might try and get him on camera here in a little bit. Chris Weaver. And I'm not sure who the other guy is, but uh, yeah. We, we're, we're watching. There's a lot of mic feedback here. So. What is Sharkey's stuff for 300? What is Emily. Shark Farmer's wife name? Mark. What is Emily? What is Emily? Chris, you gotta be you gotta be practicing for a while. Does your buddy work? Yeah, it works. Okay. Come <laughs> on. Well, we are off to walking around. We're in the Case IH booth. There's a lot of red stuff. They got a big booth here. And uh, and that black one over there is a sweet looking tractor. I, I like the looks of it and the color scheme and stuff. But um, I was hoping somebody would come up and ask me questions, and if I had any questions, then I could put them on YouTube, but they haven't, so. 
We have migrated over across the hall aisle to the New Holland booth. I tell you what, this this dark blue is awfully sharp on the New Holland tractors. I I really like that paint color. I mean, it's better than the the regular New Holland blue. However, that is a big deal right there. That methane powered tractor. Uh, I know, I know. A lot of you will just think it's ridiculous, but that's a step, and that's um, that's pretty cool that they can do that. So I was again hoping to talk to somebody about it, but. I've been standing here for a while. We are now in the 360 yield booth. Check this thing out. This is what I want so bad. Like, they've got a good video of this thing running here. And uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get one of these for our farm. It's a little difficult to do, but man, that thing is cool. Water right down the row, all fully autonomous, just runs all summer. Back and forth, just doing its thing. All right, we're at the NCGA booth. They want my picture because of this little yellow sticker. So we're gonna go talk to them and make that happen. Okay, we are, um, well, we're in the booth that everybody's been waiting for, right? The John Deere booth. So we're gonna walk around here, take a look at some different stuff and uh, see what we can see. First off, we've got an X9, X9-1100. This is the big boy, the biggest combine that John Deere makes and uh, it's impressive we've seen them a few times they've also got this cool head i have not seen one of these up close uh hd 45f so this is a hinged draper flexible cutter bar it's got these stabilizer wheels in the back here but there's actually a, a hinge mechanism right here where the wings will float the whole frame uh, flexes and hinges rather than uh, just the cutter bar like on our rd uh, 40f um, where that's a rigid frame but the flexible cutter bar so this kind of kind of combines both styles. Uh, it'd be pretty interesting to see how that performs differently in the field than, than what I'm used to. I think it would be an upgrade, but they're not cheap either, so pretty cool here. We'll go take a look up close. Um, maybe. Oh, I got a light. Let's turn the light on. Oh yeah, I did this in Louisville too, didn't I? Let's see. Nope, not that. That. There we go. Twin rotor. So you can see there's two rotors in there instead of just one. And um, yeah, huge capacity. We have no need for a combine of this size. Like I could use it in beans with a 50 foot draper on it and put it to work. I could never keep the corn away from it in corn. We would, we, we would work for half an hour and shut down and unload trucks for three hours. I mean, it's just, there's that much capacity with a machine like this. So take a look in the backside here. Look at the sieve in there. That thing is massive, huge, huge cleaning area, it's wider than our combine. I mean, just, yeah. This thing would be cool to run, but there's no way we could. it would be efficient for our operation to own one. I could probably figure out how to make a 612F work, folding 12 row corn head. That would be cool to run again. We'd be hauling corn away more than we're shelling, just trying to keep up with it, but it would be cool. So here's your uh, S790, very similar to what we run. We've got a 780, just a little bit smaller. And uh, yeah. This is, this is right up our alley here. Right kind of size that we're dealing with. Single rotor. All looks uh, pretty familiar. Very, very familiar here. Just for reference, since we were just in that X9, there's the cleaning area on a 790. Um, yeah, a bit of a difference, a bit. All right, this is cool. John Deere Autonomous tractor. It's got all the sensor suite on there for uh, full autonomy. I want to look at this. One. I'm going to sit in the cab on this one see what it looks like. Oh, look! Look, look, look. It's a new G5 Green Star display. Wider, crisper. That is cool. That's cool. I got to send a picture of this to my John Deere salesman because he's like, I haven't even seen one yet, so let me know if you can see one. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm here in the John Deere booth. We are looking at this 8R410. Yep, 410. 410. I'm here with Doug from John Deere, and he's gonna walk us through it a little bit. Tell us about this tractor specifically and what you got going on. Yeah, super excited about this one because if you come right to the front pod here, you'll see something a little bit unique. So yeah. 
This tractor and tillage tool is actually fully equipped with our current autonomous solution. So about a year now we've Very been cool. talking about our commitment to autonomy, uh -huh. um, especially labor and feeding the world is a major concern, right? And so being able to get all that work done is, is of concern. And autonomy, we think, uh, plays a role in that for farmers. Yeah. So we're showing that off here today on this tractor. Or you do have autonomous tractors currently in the fields running? Maybe we not in February, but... Yeah, we actually have autonomous tractors in the field running. Cool. We're still kind of in a development stage, so not just out and out but, that you can take home, but, but they are running. Concept they are real, yes. it exists, I've seen it, it. it's very pretty cool. exciting. And so uh, we're here showing that to customers today, uh, and also talking that even though you can't take this home and maybe use it this spring yet, how close we're getting right. and what we're offering in these tractors to make sure that they have other things like the right GPS receiver okay. or, or other harnesses that when that time comes, the amount of things they need to add to their current tractors is smaller Small. okay. and they can uh, accommodate that very quickly. Very good. So something that will be able to be retrofitted to previous ADAR models? Absolutely. It's okay. a little bit of question how far back, but certainly we see that coming back for several years that people can equip current tractors to do the latest technology. So on our farm, we have an ADAR X370 yeah. 21 model. Yeah. Something that it might be something we could consider in the future. I think a pretty good chance you might cool. have the choice to run that autonomously someday. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that would be pretty awesome. So is the cab any different? Is it looking different inside because of this package? The cab doesn't look a whole lot different just because of this. We do know have a new display yep. though that's got bigger viewing areas, a little quicker to, to boot up to get you to the field quickly. Part of the 24 model year, right? Exactly, yep. in that 24 model year. And then we have that new GPS receiver, which also has a little quicker boot up okay. times, you know? Any, any other significant upgrades to the 8Rs for model year 24? Probably the main one I would show you is right here on the tires. You kind of see these hoses that I look saw a this little hose. bit out of place. So this is our CTIS, or Central Tire Inflation System. Cool. So one of the things with tires, right, is you could run a low pressure in the field to get better grip and better flotation, flotation but compaction. you really need to air those up on the road yes. for the loads and the speeds. Well, you can't do that. You're not going to take the time to do that no, on eight not. tires, right? You're not. This allows you to basically be pre-wired uh, for that so okay. that when you get to the field, you can set it down to a lower setting, do your field operations with a bigger footprint, less slip, and then when you complete it, you can air that back up to okay. make your way to the next field. So that's a pretty good size hose. Does it adjust fairly quickly? It does. About two, two PSI per minute okay. is about the range of what that onboard and compressor is capable of. So I'm sure this is going to vary depending on the weight of the tractor and implements and lots of different factors, but roughly how much would you change PSI from in the field to road operation? Yeah, very loaded question, but you could be change, you might be able to change anywhere from maybe uh, a range of say 6 to 12 PSI, okay. depending on the weights and different okay. things, but so somewhere on the order of maybe three to five minutes, you could air that tractor sure. up to that field Which, speed, all from the cab, be on your way. From my standpoint as the operator, I'm not sitting at the field, the end, you know, at the end of the field waiting for it. I'm gonna push that button when I get in, I'm gonna start working and it's gonna work while we're moving. Right? Yeah, it's gonna work us way down yeah. pretty quickly and then either five minutes at the end or maybe as you finish that last pass, yeah, you exactly. can go ahead and start airing start it, it up. up. It's gonna be pretty mildly, uh, it won't cost you much time. Sure. That is really cool. I would prefer to just get rid of the tires. We'll just we'll just go more tracks, so we don't have to worry about that. But got uh, that, that is a very cool system, and, and I, I see a lot of value in that. So. Very good. Anything else? No, I think that's of? the big ones. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep. We do have to climb up in here and sit in this tractor though. Oh yeah. So we've got the Gen 5. It's just a little bit wider, maybe a little bit um, cleaner display, more of an iPad look. You know, the bezels and stuff around it doesn't have that raised edge like the Gen 4 monitor. And we've got a Gen 5 Extend. This replaces the monitor that I literally got last week, literally. Or maybe it was Monday, I don't even remember. But um, yeah, that's cool. This display is a little bit different to match. Styling, I like it. Someday. Someday we'll have one autonomous. I think that is cool. Now, I know some of you are going to think the autonomy thing is really dumb, right? Or just not, it's not something practical, maybe. I disagree. I think that there is a ton of value in that because labor issues are going to be bigger and bigger all of the time. And so if I can send this tractor out to go and one field cultivator, chisel plow, or something without me having to be in it where I can go and plant. You know how fast I'm gonna be able to plant this year with that new corn planter? If I could make my tractor go out autonomously, get the fields ready before, oh, that's really cool. So I think I think there's a lot of value in that. And um, I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of bugs to work through. It's gonna be years before we see this widespread on the farm. But it is here, it's coming, and um, you know, 
sensors and stuff to not get stuck. Imagine, imagine the YouTube videos of stuck tractors that got themselves stuck autonomously. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. Well, the John Deere people are more friendly than the non-John Deere people. I mean, so far. But this is a cool booth. They got a lot of really cool stuff here. We're gonna go find a uh, sprayer over here to sit in maybe. They don't have a haggy. We should bring a haggy. That's okay. So the big thing in John Deere sprayer world is this uh, sea and spray where they're actually got sensors. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but it's like looking for weeds on the ground and then spraying just the weeds instead of broadcast applications so that they're not um, wasting chemical or spraying so much, using near as much. So you want to crash this dude's interview? I can act like I'm interviewing him, but it's really somebody else. All right. This is a new sprayer. What's the number? 412R. Uh, cab is essentially the same as the tractor cab. Oh yeah, that's the, the old uh, Gen 4 display like what we have. You can see the bezels are a little bit different. It's not as widescreen. So that's the difference to the Gen 5 there. But um, I'm sure everything will be updated soon. I was wrong. They brought a Haggy. It's right there. So I uh, went and talked to the Precision guys a little bit. They got a set up there with an exact merge row unit with uh, conceals and some of that stuff on it. And, uh, good to learn what we're getting into, but the new planner's hopefully showing up Monday and we'll be able to learn it on our own stuff. So, But there's some adjustments and depths and things like that that we got to set that um, yeah, we were able to learn a little bit in there. So The show is uh, pretty quickly winding down, about a half an hour left before it closes. Um, all of the booths now have alcohol, so we might have to go find one of those. Uh, I'll go check in with the Golden Harvest people again, and then I've got a reception with the uh, Ag Explorer, my uh, foliar products company that I've been working with, so uh, we're going to go do that, but we're probably done interviewing and checking people out for today. My main number one goal for tomorrow is to get somebody from Fence to, to show me around some of their stuff for you guys, so let's see how it goes. We're, um, I think we're on the cash cab. What are you calling this? Money grab in the cab. Money grab in the cab. It's, um, we're riding a golf cart, decked out golf cart around the show. It's awesome. <laughs> She's going to ask us questions. Okay, we're going to start with easy, medium, and then hard. Let's okay, go. what do you got? Easy. The orange root vegetable has been known to improve Carrots. Vision. We have a winner. I win. Correct! <laughs> <laughs> Just like the real cash cab, they dropped us off on the totally opposite end of the room from where I'm trying to go. <laughs> but we won. We got all three questions right. We got um, we got some cash and a Visa. gift card. Oh, $10. $10 Visa gift card. Hey, all right. I'm pretty sure that's a Pivot Bio sponsored thing. So thank you to the uh, Pivot Bio people. So obviously um, there are a couple of seed brands that have a lot more market share than we do that have a lot more people here. That's one of them. The Pioneer booth. I mean, they got good stuff, but I don't, I don't. Oh yeah, I should tell you guys. So my uh, sister, she got a job, right? I told you this a while ago, working for Corteva. Pioneer. Uh, she got her placement this week, so she knows where she's going to be. Going to be spending the next year in uh, Iowa, it sounds like, working with a Pioneer uh, sales rep out there, doing some training, something. So, good for her. Looking forward to seeing how she does and, and maybe a visit to Iowa sometime this summer. You did okay. You want me to take this off? No, leave it on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the, uh, the invitation. Expect the best. All right. Well, we had our um, reception at the Ag Explore booth. The show is, I think, pretty well closed, so... We're, cheers, and um, we're gonna head back to the hotel. It is, uh, we got a little bit of a break until we've got dinner at seven with the Golden Harvest Group. Their little rewards dinner, right? Yes, Charlie's Steakhouse. Yeah, so I imagine they're gonna treat us pretty well here tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show here. I'll see if we film anything else or not, and we'll get this one out. We'll do it again tomorrow, hopefully get a few more companies and stuff. But <laughs> thanks to everybody that did talk to me, and especially the John Deere people there. That one was pretty cool. So, yeah. Cheers. Made it back up to our room. 
Changed my clothes, got all spiffy for fancy dinner tonight. And uh, yeah, we're killing a little bit of time. I think we're gonna head down to the lobby here pretty soon. You ready to go? Sounds good. Well, let's go. We have made it to dinner. We are at uh, Charlie's Steakhouse. Check this out. We got our own fancy little menu. This is gonna be it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's see. What do we get? Back to North Dakota, Mr. Chris Lockwood. Somebody has an extra speaker. Our lunch, uh, our dinner uh, table mates, they, uh, they won the Go for the Gold contest for Minnesota. And um, I told him I wouldn't zoom in on that. 67 bushels an acre. Good job, guys. This is my attempt to embarrass him. There's going to be a lot of talk about that. Man, you guys killed it. 67, how did you do it? It's pretty tough. So the weeds. Look at 67. How did, how did you do that in Minnesota? <laughs> He did triple winner, he got you. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Doesn't matter how many bushels per acre. <laughs> so I want you to. Say, I, I didn't get their video. I didn't hit the button. Oh well, it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Oh, so no, no, just send it to me here. <laughs> All right. So they've given me some awards. I have a pile here, and I, they gave me these really cool, like little Bluetooth speakers. Right. Check this thing out. It is the. Go for the gold yield challenge. That was a soybean contest. A soybean con contest. Whatever, man. Whatever. I, the corn one at least. Wait, does the corn one have corn on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The corn one does indeed have the corn yield contest on it. Same picture. It's the same picture. We um we got a pile. Oh, it's, it's almost embarrassing. Look, we're right by that giant Ferris wheel we can see from our hotel room. So anyway, uh, we're heading back, and I have a video to edit tonight. So thanks for watching this one. Hit that like and subscribe button for me, would you please? We're gonna make another one tomorrow from Commodity Classic. Hopefully, get some more interviews with some cool people at the uh, trade show. This is a really good farm show. If you've never been here, I highly recommend it. So, uh, anyway, thank you again for watching this one. Have a great night. We will see you again tomorrow. Say good night, honey. You're He's not even videoing. Oh, we're, are we're you? Telling, are. We're teaching people how to YouTube. We're teaching people how to YouTube. <laughs> we are. Waiting on a bus. We're waiting on a bus, but we're we're, we're talking about YouTube. So there, you guys are going to be on YouTube tomorrow. Okay. okay. Well, Check it out. It's good.